robotics company in Japan this week. Four robots being developed for military applications killed 29 humans in the lab. And they did it by shooting what he called metal bullets. I didn't know there was any other kind. The scariest part is that lab workers deactivated two of the robots to compart the third, but the fourth robot began restoring itself and somehow connected to an orbiting satellite to download information about how to rebuild itself even more strongly than before. This next sentence is... Uh, this Nobody is would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words... AI is far more dangerous. By the way, any technology we should fear. Yes, of course, because it was stuff humans couldn't do at the time. It was superhuman that it can calculate missile trajectories around the world for intercontinental ballistic missiles. So the, this would be AI possibly ending civilization. The recent exponential growth in the AI arena sends chills to everyone careful enough to notice. Some people think it's overreacting to average technological development, whereas others feel that the phenomenon is far from ordinary. But who's telling the truth? The expert opinions of Neil deGrasse and Elon Musk might be a perfect starting point. Talking of a perfect pair, it is evident that these duos have something in common. Well, apart from AI, which is space expertise. From here, the two differ quite interestingly. So how about a decent introduction to their backgrounds? After all, we want to know Musk and Mr. Tyson enough to see if their AI warnings will be valid. Starting with Neil Tyson, he is an astrophysicist, author, and science communicator born in New York City eight years past the mid of the previous century. DeGrasse is very popular for his expertise and opinions about stars, galaxies, and pretty much the entire cosmos. The direct result of his passion is the Hayden Planetarium in New York, where he works to make science accessible to everyone. And yes, he has a journalistic part that gives him access to interesting programs like Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, plus a podcast called The Star Talk, which pretty much deals with everything beyond the sky. That said, this astrophysicist is well vast with a little bit of tech. He's written at least 50,000 lines of code, giving him some authority in tech. On the other hand, we have a more popular, sarcastic, and outgoing Musk, whom most of us know. But for the sake of Mars inhabitants unaware of what is going on on Earth, Let's give Musk a little intro. Elon Musk is every person you can think of. He's a space expert, electric car maker, tunnel borer, cyborg creator, and a couple of other tech things too. To this extent, he has a level of respect to say something about the currently exploding AI technology, which for your information has gotten bigger and extremely intelligent. Well, Musk and DeGrasse have some interesting warnings to give about AI, some of which will intrigue you. At the same time, others will make you sober. However, as you continue watching this video, you will realize that their opinions differ somewhat. Let's start with Musk, who is, in this case, more into tech than DeGrasse. Elon Musk is not new in sounding AI warnings to the world. Long before we even had a glimmer of ChatGPT, he had already sounded warnings about the dangers of AI. And for that, many thought he was having a temporary lapse of sanity. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? Back in World War II, the world was introduced to a dangerously powerful weapon previous generations had never seen. The nuclear bomb. Thanks to this invention, the whole cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki hit the proverbial bottom and millions were killed as a result. Now Elon Musk dared to suggest that AI was more powerful than any nuclear weapon which we tend to think was so bold of him. Some of his peers in the tech arena, like Mark Zuckerberg, couldn't hide their amusement at Elon Musk's statement and ended up calling him a doomsday prophet. But we all know how Musk is. He's always relentless in what he believes in. His efforts never stopped even in 2023. They just heightened after the introduction of OpenAI's invention ChatGPT, which has held masses in awe. Musk boldly signed a letter that calls for stopping further AI development for six months. In addition, the SpaceX and Tesla CEO has given us reasons to believe his warnings after promising to come up with his AI called TruthGPT. His best way of fighting AI is using another AI which is more truthful and friendly to humans. 
Yet Musk is not alone in warning about the dangers of AI. Experts are starting to believe that Musk foresaw the future of AI a decade ago. It is becoming more evident to AI experts that AI is gaining more knowledge and expertise in a way that is a little too good to be safe. It looks like GPT-4, Google's Lambda, and several others in the market pose a significant risk due to the trillions of data they handle about humans. Eventually, the whole globe will be directly affected by AI sooner or later. Then again, there's the widespread outcry that AI will take over human jobs, which to some degree is true. A lot of automation might eventually lead to some people losing their sources of income to machines. But this is not such a big worry to Musk. Elon Musk is concerned about the physical harm AI might pose to humanity, eventually calling it humans' existential crisis. While this may sound a little extreme to most folks, Musk explained that it's because experts hate to admit that a machine can be more intelligent than them. The biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart, dumber than we think we are. Th this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. I'm really quite close to, I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows, and the rate of improvement is exponential. We cannot deny the fact that some AI has proven experts wrong in their own game. AlphaZero, for instance, beat the best chess player in the world, and there are similar stories in almost every other field intruded by AI. Simply put, Elon Musk strongly believes that AI is risky, and he's not alone. Neil's apprehension about AI is similar to Elon Musk's. As a prominent science communicator in the science field for over four decades, DeGrasse takes a slightly different approach. The first thing about DeGrasse, which you will appreciate, is that he doesn't succumb to the doomsday narrative about AI. We have all heard the scary warnings and stories about AI taking over the world, with the horrors being backed up by science fiction movies. Nevertheless, DeGrasse will give everyone some relief. According to this renowned space expert, the panic about GPT-4 and AI is all for nothing. As a matter of fact, AI was calculating real complex algorithms and math before GPT-4. Then suddenly when people realize that a computer can hold conversations like an average human, everyone is scared about AI. Let's admit this. AI was brilliant even before ChatGPT. The only difference between now and then is the amount of attention this technology has attracted. As a result, millions of people are realizing just how powerful technology has grown over the years, right under their noses. Yet again, Neil deGrasse admits that the computer's ability to calculate a missile's trajectory is risky. By the way, any technology we should fear. Yes, of course. When computers could calculate gravitational forces, they're the nefarious people, what basically every country would now calculate trajectories for missiles using computers. Yeah. That is AI with the capacity to be highly destructive. I, I'll call it AI because it was stuff humans couldn't do at the time. It was superhuman that it can calculate missile trajectories around the world for intercontinental ballistic missiles. So the, this would be AI possibly ending civilization. AI is simply doing what humans don't care to do in a matter of seconds. That alone is scary and makes it a significant risk. But before you wear your worrying gear, Neil deGrasse takes a different and in fact more exciting opinion about AI ever replacing human jobs. The historical flaw in the reasoning is to presume that when jobs disappear, there will be no jobs for people to do. More people are employed in the world than ever before, yet none of them is making buggy whips. Just because you can't see a new job sector in the horizon doesn't mean it is not there. AI has obviously shaken people's courage in facing future employment possibilities. Yet from history, we have learned enough to know that new and exciting opportunities arise with the effacing of old jobs. More excitedly, DeGrasse acknowledged the thousands of benefits he could grab from AI. Now that computers have mastered language and culture, my first thought is, let it do thankless language stuff that nobody really wants to do anyway, and for which people hardly ever get visible credit, like writing manuals or brochures, or figure captions or wiki pages. But we must agree on this. Both Musk and DeGrasse agree that AI has a level of risk to humanity. Let's borrow a leaf from Elon's nuke statement and make an analogy. Picture AI as a weapon. A weapon in itself is harmless if nothing touches it. 
Nonetheless, AI in the hands of a wrong person can cause unprecedented harm to humanity. This is the risk of AI. Elon Musk's outcry to organizations and governments for the longest time is regulation. This will simply put AI away from the wrong hands. Elon Musk believes that the most powerful person in the world is the one who has absolute control over the world's AI. While technology continues to advance, there's a need for an overseeing body to ensure some control over safety and responsibility. Neil Tyson noted that quite a number of countries are eventually appointing AI ministers to oversee the whole AI process. This might be the only way out of rapidly developing AI. Finally, let's wrap it up with Neil Tyson's words. At times like this, one can futilely try to ban the progress of AI. The best way out is regulation of some sort. Otherwise, DeGrasse believes that what AI will never know is something that is not on the internet. Now pay attention to this brief explanation by Brian Cox, and soon you will understand more deeply about this topic. Do, do, are you scared of artificial life, artificial intelligence? Um, Elon Musk scared the shit out of me. Yeah, when he talked about it. Like, he, he talks about it like we're in the, the opening scene of a science fiction movie where he's trying to warn people and then they don't listen to, to the genius and it goes south. Sort of depends. I chaired a debate on this um, for the Royal Society in London a few weeks ago. And uh, the, so it's true now at the moment, what, what people tend to be frightened of are general AIs. Or AGI, they call it, Artificial General Intelligence, which is like what we talked about earlier, a, a human-like capability thing. Yes. Um, and we're miles away from that. We, we don't know how to do it. We haven't got them, and we're miles away. So at the moment, artificial intelligence is expert systems and very focused systems that do particular things. You can be scared of them in a limited economic sense because they're going to displace people's jobs. And actually, interestingly, in this panel discussion we had, it's going to be like what you might call middle class jobs in the UK, so white collar jobs. It's not Which actually. Is why you, people are interested in universal basic income to sort of replace money that's going to yeah. be lost because there will be no jobs for all these people. Otherwise, we have uh, just a mass catastrophe. Yeah, they're very good. Someone said that these systems, artificial intelligence systems at the moment, are very good at doing things like law lawyers' work. Mm. <laughs> so they're very good at reading contracts and things like that. So it's interesting because it's, it's a revolution. It's not like the industrial revolution where it's manual labor that gets hit necessarily. This is kind of interesting because it hits that kind of intermediate level that usually escapes. Um, so you're right. One of the answers is to tax. There was an ex example was a robot tax. So in a car factory, you say to the manufacturer, well, okay, you can have a robot, but you pay the robot the same as you pay a person. And then that money goes into funding universal basic income or something like that. Mm. So I think the, there's got to be an, an economic change because these systems will be there. But all the experts I spoke to agreed that the idea of a Terminator-style general intelligence taking over the world is miles away. And um, so whilst we might start thinking about the regulation, it's not going to happen soon is the general point, I think. So I would disagree with him on that. I think I think it's too far in the future at the moment. I, think I might be one of those people that's going, eh, it's going to be all right. right. And, then, and then, you know, my iPhone takes me out <laughs> on the way <laughs> to the airport. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the thing. I mean, you, you, it's our choice at the moment, isn't it? I mean, don't don't give your iPhone a laser, right. <laughs> you know, for example. And then it doesn't right. matter if it goes crazy and tries to take over the world. I know, I know that's a bit facetious because they can – he would say they could take over power grids and all that kind of stuff, yes. I guess. But. Well, it's these concepts that are really hard to visualize, like Sir Kurzweil's idea of the exponential increase of technology leading t us to a point in the near future where you're going to be able to download your consciousness into a computer. You talk to computer experts, they're like, there's no way, we're miles away from that. Yeah, or neuroscientists. Yeah. Neuroscientists yeah. go, you, <laughs> we no way. Yeah. One, new, one brain cell, probably, we, we can't. But Kurzweil's mm. convinced that what's going to happen is that as technology increases, it can, increases in this wildly exponential way where we really can't visualize it. We can't even imagine how much advancement will take place over 50 years. But in those 50 years, something's yeah. going to happen that radically changes our idea of what's possible. And I think Elon shares this idea as well, that it's going to sneak up on us so quickly that when it does go live, it'll be too late. Yeah. I mean, it's worth putting the, the, the framework in place, I think, the regulatory framework. Even as you said, for the more realistic problem, which is people's jobs are going to get displaced. Yes. And uh, there's a great... 
um, I was at a thing and some someone said I can't remember who it was, but they said that the job it was a politician. The the job of the innovation system is to create jobs faster than it destroys them. So you've always got to remember that as a mm. government and as regulators, if you're going to allow technologies into the marketplace that destroy people's jobs, it is your responsibility to find a way of replacing those jobs or compensating those people, as you said. Well, Otherwise, about you get breakdown, social breakdown. Being break a human being, though, is that people need some meaning. Like, they just giving them income, I think, is just going to... I mean, it's just my speculation, but it's going to create mass despair. Even if you provide them, you provide them with food and shelter, they need people need things to do. So it's yeah. it, there's going to be some sort of a demand to find meaning for people, give yeah. them occupations, give them something, some task. That's, it seems to be one of the critical parts of being a person is that we, we need things to do that we find meaning in. Yeah. You know, like you were talking about, we're the only things that we know of that have meaning, that find meaning and share meaning and believe in that. We're going to need something like that. If universal basic income comes along, I don't think it's going to be enough to just feed people and house them. Yeah. They're going to want something to do. If a, you know, a person is a, you're doing something for an occupation and this is your identity, and then all of a sudden that occupation becomes irrelevant because a computer does it faster, cheaper, quicker. These people are going to have this incredible feeling of despair and, and just not being valuable. Yeah, I mean, uh, what one the utopian sort of a version of this is that everybody gets to do what we're doing now right. which is make a living sort of thinking and creating and all that kind of you know so that that's the the utopian ideal is you don't yeah. need to do the stuff the job that you don't really want to do in the factory right uh, you, you can do the thing that humans are best at but that, that but I, I agree it's, it's that's a very utopian view yeah. Does everybody want to do that? Or does everybody have the mindset? Well, Maybe it would be great to education, if yeah. everybody had an interest like that. If everybody went on to make pottery and painting and doing all these different things that they've always really wanted to do. And their needs are met by, you know, the universal basic income money that they receive every month. But, boy, there's a lot of people I don't think have those desires or needs. And to sort of force mm -hmm. it onto them at age 55 or whatever it's going to be. Yeah, seems to be very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it's I, a big challenge. But I think that, in concept at least, it's inevitable that we do have some sort of an artificial intelligence that resembles us, or that resembles something like ex machina. If people choose to create that, I mean, choose to create it in our own image. But that's very godlike, isn't it? God created us in our own, His own image. Yeah. And and again, yeah, is it? I don't know. The, the, when I, when I talk to people in the field, uh, as as you probably have, most of them say, don't know how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really right. It's going to be miles away. So maybe I'm hiding my head in the sand a bit. But I I don't think so. I, I think it's. I think we'll know it when. I don't think anyone's going to do it accidentally. Right. So I I don't think it's just suddenly going to be upon us. I I, I think. We will see. We'll, we'll see ourselves getting acquiring that capability. We'll see ourselves we'll, getting close. We'll, we'll see those systems beginning to emerge, and then we'll think about it. Just I to, think two hundred years ago, if you wanted a photograph of something, you want a picture of something, you had to draw it. I mean, there was no photography two hundred years ago. Yeah. I mean, just think of that. It's almost inconceivable. No automobiles. No photography. Yeah. What was automobile? Well, maybe there was some sort of machines that drove people around, right? Something close. There was well, trains years ago, earlier yeah. than that, right? Mm. You, you go back 500 years, you have almost nothing. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, we've been quick. It's so <laughs> fast. It's so yeah. fast. I mean, and then this, what we're doing right now, there's people right now in their car that are streaming this. So they're in their car and they're listening as they're driving on the road. Maybe they have a Tesla. Maybe they have an electric car. They're driving down the road, streaming two people talking, where it's ones and zeros that are broken down into some audible form, and you can listen to it mm. in your car. That is bananas. Yeah, I agree. We've been quick. So quick. Well, think of the world, you know, the internet. I mean, it's, a, it's a not long. I mean, I remember it being Something invented. that is not on the internet. 
Do you support the regulation of AI? Why or why not? Feel free to share your views in the comment section below. To this end, thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can always get notified when we post the latest and most exciting tech news that you would not want to miss.